All right, got it. All right, thank you, Margaret. Um, all right, that'll that'll bring the the meeting to order here. First thing I'm going to do is obviously you, you probably all heard that with the warning, but I'm going to warn everybody that the uh, the meeting is being recorded. Uh, so everything uh, you say uh, will be carefully scrutinized. So be careful what you say. Uh, as part of our recording protocol, right, we we do post it to our YouTube uh, website after it's over so that other people can see what happened at the meeting that, that weren't present here, too. So um, that's where we stand. And with that, I am going to do the roll call. So uh, indicate if you're here. Uh, Margaret? Present. Uh, Corla is not here. Mandy? Here. Don? Here. Robert, Trip Jackson? Here. Angela? Here. Nicole? Here. Tina? Here. Matt? Present. Joe is not here. <clears throat> Sam? Here. Paul Webb? Here. Uh, Javier is not here. And Brad? Brad, I, I see you. Are you here? He's a maybe on mute. I don't know. I see him on here, so I'm going to count him as present. Brad, I see you, but you're not responding. <clears throat> All right. So we're missing three. So we have 12 people here. That's definitely a quorum. All right. And so uh, with that, um, do we have, everybody's got the agenda. Does everybody, is, does anybody want to make a motion to approve the agenda or any additions? I'll move to approve the agenda. Okay. Got a second from Paul Webb. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? All right. All right, that appeared to have passed unanimously. Perfect. All right, and then um, we'll talk. I uh, just want to approve that everybody's in favor of moving forward with this meeting by Zoom. And in that regard, I just want to let everybody know the latest update that I have is that um, I think that Zoom meetings have been approved through the end of February. And so, and there's going to be a CC, CPC discussion about that later this month, and then there's going to be further action by the city in February. So, at least for tonight um, and next February, uh, the next meeting in February, we'll probably be meeting by Zoom. After that, we'll have to see what goes on. Hopefully, it'll get extended. But obviously, there's still new new variants of, of COVID, and so I think it's justified for us to continue to meet by Zoom. So, with that... Um, do I have a motion to approve us uh, meeting by Zoom? Got a motion from Nicole, second by Angela. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And um, Fred? Yes. Can I just interrupt? That I'll I'll accept that as a motion to approve by Zoom. But just as a uh, just as a comment for the Zoom meetings, and I know this group is very much in favor of Zoom meetings, so. Just keep your mind open. Um, there is some great benefits to meeting in person. I've had a couple of meetings in person in the last couple of months, and there's some off things that you get to touch on, feel uh, different sentiments. You get to just collaborate better. So just keep an open mind, all of you. And uh, I know I know we're doing fine on Zoom, but uh, there are benefits to meeting in person. Thank you. Well, I I guess you took the words right out of my mouth there, Nicole. So I appreciate I really appreciate that comment. So. I, I want to get a sense for what everybody else wants to do because I'm I'm flexible and I know that um, a few more people are trickling into our office. Um, we are having attorney dinner meetings where people are getting together and um, there are meetings in, in person and certainly I have to go here in court in person. So it's starting to happen more. So I did want to get a sense for the board. I, I have Nicole's comment. How, how do other people feel, feel about potentially starting to to get back together in person maybe in March or April. I'm okay with it as long as there is, um, you know, open uh, doors, windows. So there is, you know, fresh air coming in and out, but a completely closed up room. I just think that we're asking for more people to get sick, especially if, you know, a lot of elderly people. Yeah, and, and in that regard, we would probably, 
be meeting at the at the library. That's where we've done it traditionally. So, and that's it's not super open. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, it will be see. It would be interesting to see if the city settles or permits a hybrid form where uh, people can plug in remotely or or not. One detail in the way the uh, uh, the interpretation that Sam forwarded to us was that um, it would be difficult for a member to participate remotely. So if, say, Fred were out of town on a business meeting, uh, under the conditions they specified, you probably would not be able to participate remotely. And I would think that a member, particularly as a citizen, uh, should be allowed to participate, maybe not vote, but at least be able to watch and to pipe, pipe up occasionally. Yeah, well, and of course, that's, it's been an advantage, right? When I've had to travel for business, right? And I can, I can go to my hotel room and, and I can, and I can handle the meeting from wherever I'm at, but. Um... Well, you can, but under the conditions they specified, you would have to specify. You would have to reverse, uh, get permission well in advance. You could only do so uh, a certain number of times a year. Right. You had to, to do participate remotely. You had to be in our jurisdiction, not our right. Hotel. So, yeah. So I guess my point is that I'm. I guess I'm agreeing with you in that that was <clears> the <throat> problem in that I'm not going to do that. So instead of doing that, I'm going to put Margaret in charge of the meeting. <laughs> Go, well, I was, was going to say, I I think this is going to work out for the rest of the the our year here. It's mm -hmm. been working out fine. I don't see any point in changing it now. I think this should be a good discussion for the new board um, to decide uh, which route they want to go because we do have to plan a year in advance with with meeting notices to the library too, and they've got so much going on right now. I know for one of my other groups, we're starting to meet at the library and their calendar's filling up pretty quickly this year. So um, I don't know, just something to keep in mind, but I have a quick question. Sure. Um, can you go live transcript? Because I don't know how to do, do that. I've never had to. And I know Paul Webb asked for it and a few mm -hmm. others. Can you guys see the live transcript? Yeah. Or anybody know how to do it? Know how to do it? Uh, let me see. I, I don't know how to do it. Okay. I don't either. I'm trying. I'll still play yeah. with it, Paul. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mark. We'll but if you guys, if someone could let me know once you see it, just send me a quick message so I can stop trying to get it on here. Okay. But I'll keep trying. I saw Mandy. Did you have a comment about about meeting? Uh, yeah. The one question I had is with regard to like the subcommittees. You know, um, Margaret brought up an excellent point with the library schedule filling up with the rooms that they have, and also those smaller rooms don't have a lot of ventilation. The ones down in the basement of the library. Is that fine? If um, you know, if we do go in person, that the subcommittees. Can we meet like in Park Point Loma as long as it's in the boundary and a well ventilated place? Can we change the location of where we're meeting? Or I think, um, I think you can. I don't. I don't see any reason why you can't change the, the location of the meeting. You just have to make sure to comply with the Brown Act and give seventy two yeah, hours yeah. notice and okay. have a location that that if somebody wanted to show up okay. to your meeting, they could they could get to it. All right. Yeah. And I would I would be open to that. And then if anyone else is in need of a space to hold meetings in the neighborhood, um, you know, I would be able to help facilitate that along with Angela, I'm sure to, you know, utilize the clubhouse at Park Point Loma if a space was needed. Yeah. So I think for the subcommittees, though, I think they're if they wanted to be, continue to meet remotely through February, they're, they're, they're clear to yeah. do that. Yeah, but like I said, that's what one more month. <laughs> so we need to make plans. <laughs> we do. Yeah. We All do. right. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely. Um, it seems like everyone's meeting in person. I think if anything dramatic would change, that you know we would accommodate that. But um, I'm I'm open to meeting in person. Okay, Matt, do you have some thoughts on this? Yeah, and so, sorry, my internet dropped. So if I repeat anything that's already been said, just you know, be be patient. Um, so my. One of my concerns was uh, related to the uh, document that um, uh, Sam had forwarded to us about the uh, the Brown Act and how that you know is going to be coming up in uh, you know end of February. the The question or concern I have is related to you know if if we go back to meeting in person, 
particularly for things like subcommittee meetings, um, it, it looked like uh, there was uh, potentially a requirement uh, that these would be kind of hybrid meetings, right? Um, so that people would still be able to attend for comment. And, you, you know, it, it was just like a physical requirement in terms of meeting quorum. And so my, my question, and this could be something uh, for, you know, our rep, uh, you know, if it's Margaret or Corla to take to CPC, would be asking, you know, to what extent are we going to be expected to, you know, kind of handle all of the hybrid meeting aspects ourselves as meeting organizers and what resources might there be available for us to uh, make this an easier process? Well, I think the answer is that, that we don't we don't know for sure right now. So that's not that's not a great insight, but I, I, I don't expect it to be many city resources given to us. So the question will be whether or not we have the resources and that might be each individual subcommittee to do a hybrid meeting or whether they, you know, they would just want to do an in-person meeting or if they were still allowed just to a, a Zoom meeting because the hybrid one, at least from my perspective as a as a more computer challenged person would be more difficult than than either just Zoom or just in person. So yeah, yeah, and I I, I agree in that uh, sense of um, the difficulty. You know, I've tried to do several scientific meetings in this hybrid way too, and um, I, I'm not necessarily opposed to going you know either direction in person or Zoom for these meetings. I would just want I I guess probably some clarity whether uh, it, the way I read those draft regulations was that it might be required of us if we're meeting in person to have the hybrid option. So that, that's that's all I want clarity for, I guess. Okay, well, we'll, we'll keep an eye out yeah. on that then, what the requirements thanks, are. Thanks for that. All right, and of course, obviously, it's all subject to whether or not there's a change in COVID or anything like that, because if things got serious and that would put, change everything. I think, Sam, I see your hand. Yeah, I just wanted to comment and reinforce the earlier comment that uh, meeting in person does expose uh, people particularly I think during this winter, winter season, I'd like to see us go at least into the late spring uh, before we went in person if we're not uh, forced to do so by the, um, the, the let's say that there's no extension to meeting by hybrid. Secondly, I want to reinforce that, that for several, like in my neighborhood, I know there's people that use walkers, canes, et cetera. They do not find it very convenient to come to a in-person meeting and would much more likely participate online. So I think the handicapped would be a little bit uh, imposed upon if we went back to uh, in-person meetings. But, you know, that's my belief. Yeah, well, it's interesting. I mean, I, I think that, you know, that you have the Brown Act and, um, and so we have to have the appropriate reasons to to meet virtually and and there's a strong public policy about meeting in person but the net effect of, of zoom is right we've had hundreds and hundreds if not over a thousand people view our videos which seems incredible to me because <laughs> i don't know who, who does it but lots of people review what we do and if we do it by zoom right we actually get more public outreach and we reach more people and people that can't be here right now but can look at it later actually do it so you know, I, you know, there's a strong argument that we get more public outreach this way than we did before. All right, with that, I, I think I have a sense of the board. I will keep you posted on that issue. And my recollection is that we already voted to approve at least having this meeting by Zoom. So we'll move forward to approval of the minutes. Mandy. I'll go ahead and uh, put the motion out to approve the meeting minutes for yeah. November. Paul, Second. you're muted, Paul. I actually have a correction to the minutes. Okay, uh, go ahead, Paul. Item number two under the, uh, I'm looking at two different computers right now, under the board initiated action items. Uh, it's just, it basically, it's a typo. It's, it says, Paul, should read, Paul originally seconded this. This is the second to last uh, sentence on the page. Uh, it's just a, a typo. No scones were actually harmed in the passage of this item. All right, perfect. Thank you for those uh, edits, Paul. I'll modify the, the, the minutes, thank you. Any others? 
All right. With all that, right. all the, all in favor of the minutes? Yes. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that passes 11 to nothing. Good job, Mandy. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, board officer reports. I guess I will st I will start off. I mean, um, I, I appreciated Sam's comment earlier today because I was going to say that. I want to say welcome back, everybody, after the holidays. 2023, um, as, a, as an old person, right? I certainly remember when we turned to the year 2000, which seems now a long time ago, <laughs> but it doesn't seem that long ago to me. And certainly yeah. time before that. So it's it's hard to believe that it's 2023. And um, it's going to be an exciting year. Um, we got a lot of good people. We got an election coming up. And, you know, just a couple of things. I, I did, um, you know, I, I sent this over to Mandy, but I want to make sure that everybody in the community knows too, is that the city is taking action at the local uh, beach parking lots and Mission Bay. And so they've been working and they've uh, issued some applications to get permits to close those parking lots at night. And they're gonna close them different hours, but essentially from like two o'clock in the morning to, to six o'clock in the morning, those, those type of hours. And that's to, to help protect the people that live near those, those areas from, from stay up doing things. Or, or as I would tell my kids, right? Nothing, nothing good ever happens to anybody after two o'clock in the morning. So, um, so I think that's a good step to help protect our community. So I was glad to see that the city was taking action to do that. Um, second, um, I did actually, I'm just going to say, I'm happy to see Linda Lucas here, right? Sometimes people run for office, doesn't go exactly as they want, and we never see them again, but you are here. So thank you, Linda. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Thanks, and um, yes. Uh, yes, so thank you. And then uh, third, I just want to say it is going to be a big year, right? I mean, the the city council has passed a uh, reform that's going to be coming down this year for planning boards. And by the end of the year, we are going to have to reapply for our status, just like every other planning board in, this, in the city. I think our bylaws are as good as anybody's, and, and we have things in there that, like the environmental committee that nobody has. So I think we're going to be fine. But but we are going to have work in that area, and, and there's going to be some new challenges for the for the board coming up in 2023. So that's what I have for tonight. And unless there's any questions, I will pass it to Margaret. I want to echo. Oh, Sam, I think has a question. Sam, you, you got a question? Um, Fred, I haven't been through the reapplication uh, for the board, and uh, essentially, is this uh, we just take a paper submittal or do we really have to is there some significant undertakings there i think there's going to be I, I think we're probably going to have to form a committee and we're going to have to have a few people look at it it's going to be a paper submission but you're going to have to um there's certain criteria that the city's looking at we're supposed to get more information as the year progresses so we're waiting for more information right now but the city's going to want to make sure that we've addressed some of the concerns that they have about uh, outreach to different different parts of the community to make sure that our, our planning board is inclusive, that we have a, a diverse board that's made up of different people with different backgrounds and, and, and that type of thing. And, um, you know, I'll just give one example is the city would love to make, the city wants us to consider whether or not we wanna have a board seat that's reserved for renters, a uh, renter representative. And so that would be an issue that we would have to discuss and decide. So when we submit, we either have one or we don't have one and we have a justification for it. So um, so a lot of the other criteria, I think that you know our, our bylaws are very detailed and so and, and consistent with with the most of the current regulations. So I think we're in pretty good shape, but but there's some nuances that the city's going to want us to address. So I, I think we're going to need Three three people or so to look at it. Okay, thank you. You can think about whether you want to be the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, uh, Margaret. And I'll echo in your sentiments about our planning board being pretty organized subcommittees because I, in the last few months, have been attending quite a bit of different planning boards just to see 
if they're experiencing what we're experiencing or if Point Loma and Ocean Beach are the stepchildren of the city. And I'm telling you, we're there, every neighborhood's experiencing, and I, Linda, I think you can attest by attending stuff too. I think everybody getting a big piece of the picture in planet, part of these planning boards because the destruction's coming into every neighborhood pretty quickly and bypassing a lot of the planning boards. And so a lot of like the CPC, you'll be able to hear a lot of the different neighborhoods speak at those meetings about what's coming down the pipelines for them. So I guess my recommendation for all of you is, is getting the big picture of San Diego as a whole, not just what's coming down the pipelines for Point Loma, but San Diego in general. If you plan on residing here and making San Diego your permanent home, really get to know what's what their 10-year plans are because it's quite interesting. I've been making a religious effort to not only attend you know, and be part of groups in Point Loma, but I'm going on the outskirts of Point Loma and attending those neighboring community group meetings. And it blows my mind at what's being, you know, done underneath everyone's noses. So I'm seeing communities bond a lot more together. I'm seeing representatives attend more meetings. Thank you to all the ones that are here today. Um, and, you know, as residents, renters, owners, what have you, it's really important to ask those questions and get involved. Don't just sit there and bitch and complain on next door, you know, when projects pop up next to you or your neighbor's house got destroyed across the street, you really got to get involved and attend some of those neighboring committee meetings there. A lot of them are Zoom. A lot of people are still meeting via Zoom as we are. Um, and, um, you know, get to know the big picture of San Diego and not just your local community. And I'm really proud of this group. I know you're all doing the work and we're all contributing and that's what's important in taking a seat on this is board is actually, you know, getting involved in doing some act, helping with the action. So I thank you guys. I'll continue to send meeting links over to you guys as I get them. And then um, let's work together to make our community in San Diego a better place for everyone. Okay, thank you, Margaret. Mandy, do you have anything that you want to add from the treasurer? Oh, uh, from the secretary standpoint, no, secretary, everything's sorry. going great over here. It's great to see everyone. Happy New Year. So, sorry, I have my screen off. I don't know. Um, it's been glitching, kind of being weird. So that's why I don't have my screen on. So it's great to see everyone tonight. Okay. Thank you, Mandy. All right. And then uh, with that, we'll go to non-agenda public comment. This is where we invite uh, speakers if they want to say something for two minutes. Um, so I'm going to open it up. And so since I'm happy to have Linda come back and I see your hand go first, I'm, I'm going to let you go first. Thanks. I just <laughs> wanted to wish everyone a happy new year. And to those who supported my candidacy, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And while it was certainly disappointing, the outcome was certainly disappointing. Um, I am hoping that we can all work together and the next four years are better than our last. So thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, Jack, I see you. Go ahead. Yeah, Linda, thanks for running. I now know just a small taste firsthand of what it's like to run for office. Um, but my point here of introducing myself is just to say hello to everyone. I'm a member of the Environmental Subcommittee and Mandy is a, a friend who has been so generous with her time introduced me to the group and um, also introduced me to some volunteer opportunities in the community. Uh, I've, I was born and raised in Point Loma, actually in the peninsula area. And so all of my memories, my childhood memories are there with my family and my sister. You know, my father actually fled a communist uh, takeover in the civil war in Angola in 1976 and settled in Point Loma where he lives to this day with my mom. So I'm really looking forward to meeting everyone, working with everyone, uh, just as a volunteer for now, but perhaps I'll have a chance to run uh, for the board in the future. So that's my comment and thank you all for your service. All right, well, thanks Jack and welcome. And, and we appreciate your service on the environmental committee. I, again, I, the environmental committee is one of those things that not every, I don't think any other planning boards have. So that's, it makes us special and we need people to contribute. So thank you. There's Great an election in March too. Thank you. Don, go ahead. Yeah, some good news. Um, 
the NTCP, uh, NTC Park uh, next to Liberty Station has about 40 dead palm trees. There's a beetle at work. And uh, a nonprofit exists now called the Parks Foundation. Our own uh, Martha Phillips, who many may know, is on that board. Uh, six parks are going to get <coughs> new trees. These aren't just dinky little trees. These are the kind that, that come in boxes, have to be uh, moved around with a forklift. And uh, that park is one of them. Uh, the goal is to plant about 40 new trees, replace the dying, one, dying ones. Uh, it probably is going to be a mix of some palm trees and some uh, uh, true shade trees. The arborist that they work with, not the one that that uh, sawed down all of the palm trees on uh, <laughs> Newport, uh, favors the, the the shade trees. They uh, probably in March they will uh, announce more details. Probably seek uh, donations from the public, but they are going forward, and uh, one of our parks will be the recipient. All right. Well, thank you, Don. Any other non-agenda public comment? All right. With that, we will move to government reports. And I see Officer Cirillo down in the bottom. So if you're available, I know safety is important, so I'm going to let you go first. Oh, well, thank you very much, Fred. And a happy new year to everybody. Uh, pleasure to be here. I only have two things, so I will be quick. I don't want to take up too much time of your uh, agenda and meeting. One, shift changes this weekend. I know you guys have heard it from me before. Nighttime goes to afternoon. Afternoon goes to day. Day goes to night. Uh, stay in the same neighborhoods for the most part. We don't pull people out of OB and Point Loma, put them up in Linda Vista and Hillcrest. But the officers haven't seen the shift that they're about to go to um, in eight months. That means that, as you guys know, daytime is different issues than the nighttime is different from the uh, afternoon. So if you see officers, feel free to say hello, introduce yourself, let them know. Um, some of the issues that you're facing in your community at that given time of day that you're seeing them. The other thing is I just want to update on the press that was all out there regarding the altercation fight that happened in front of Hodads in Ocean Beach. Uh, I think it was back in late October, early November. And the suspect, the main suspect has been arrested. He was arrested up in Riverside County at his uh, parents' house. I don't think technically he would be considered to me at least homeless, although that whole group of individuals were classified as homeless. They seem to be more people just loitering on the streets, but always had a place to go to. So he was arrested for the felony charge. It did get sent up as a package up to the district attorney's office. They've chosen not to press the misdemeanor charges against the other three individuals that were involved, but the subject did plead guilty and uh, is now awaiting sentencing. And that would be hopefully then the closure in regards to what had happened there. Now, the reason that they're probably not going after the other three for misdemeanors is their roles were kind of minor, uh, pushing, shoving, maybe some attempts to hit or kick. Uh, but it really was, even though we all saw the video, there were some issues with the case. And um, I, I think that the district attorney is satisfied with, hey, here's the primary aggressor. And he is now pled guilty. So they're willing to... Uh, do the sentencing and move on from that. Other than that, I don't want to take up any more of your times and uh, that's it for me, unless somebody has a question and I'll let Fred, you dictate whether you have time for a, a question or two. We, yeah, I think we have time for a couple of questions. I have a question. I I, I read and, and have seen that it appears that we finally cleared all the Coastal Commission restrictions and the street vending ordinance is now in place. So is there any update as to enforcement with that? Uh, yeah, so as I understand it also, I think it's uh, coming up in a couple of weeks where enforcement is going to be able to occur along the coastal areas, which would be the uh, peninsula slash ocean beach, et cetera. Right now, um, as it was written, it was park rangers and code needed to be the primary enforcers of that. We're going to be partnering with rangers and assisting to some degree. Um, a, you might have seen in the news where there was a stabbing downtown, and so the the city was like, okay, listen, we're going to have to have the police involved. I'm hoping that we don't have to wait for something like that here in the peninsula area, 
and that it will just be, hey, officers, you're there, you're already on scene, start educating, and then move to uh, progressive enforcement and help address some of these issues. So once we have direction from city leadership, we will follow their direction and go from there. The law does not need to be rewritten to allow the police to assist. Um, it can just occur, but we will wait for direction from city leadership before we do. Okay. Do we have any other questions for Officer Sorella? Don, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Officer, there have been a number of burglaries. It seems like an organized ring, perhaps. Uh, burglaries on businesses on Rosecrans. Uh, a number of businesses in uh, Ocean Beach. And I believe that you were a part of your discussion with Jensen's on, on burglary at, at their store. And uh, they felt the re response from the police department was less than adequate. Any, any comment? Yeah, uh, we did meet with the owner of Jensen's, myself and uh, um, members of Jen Jennifer Campbell's office. Uh, explained everything, brought all the cases that were involved with Jensen. Um, and uh, we most certainly had done a very thorough uh, investigation and follow up by the detective. If we have new information that comes forward in regards to helps us identify the suspects, then we will follow those leads. Once it was explained, uh, it should have been very clear that we actually did do a complete investigation there. In regards to other crimes that have happened in the general area. There was another business uh, recently that had a safe stolen in the Rosecrans area. It is unrelated. We have nothing relating the two. The physical descriptions based upon the videos do not match at all with the original suspects from Jensen's. The uh, instances that are the uh, incidents that are occurring in Ocean Beach, uh, it's been the same person going to um, one of the coffee shops and it's not the same person who I think is going to the ale station or the ale brewery. Um, so we do have different people who are out there committing crimes, but they're not an organized group that are, are working the area. We have nothing to indicate that is the case. But I did read all the cases from Jensen's. It was definitely a most thorough investigation by the officers that responded and took the um, initial investigation along with the detective that was assigned the case. All right. Any Officer other Cerullo? questions? Officer Cerullo, ahead, it's Margaret. I've noticed a lot of the businesses down in Midway putting up little signs up in their businesses, which I truly, I think you and I have been a while ago <laughs> talking about this, but they, they're starting to put signs up in hiring security in their malls, their little strip malls. And I think that's helping quite a bit with the homeless community and crime problem down there um I, it seems like the landlords are taking more of a responsibility i don't know who's pushing them to do that but it is it is looking a little tiny bit better so i appreciated seeing that over the past weekend yeah it, it double double answer on this one it is absolutely too bad that we have now turned into a society where businesses are having to hire so much security to protect their merchandise and their um, their businesses. Um, I think that we can all drive around and see that the times have changed. There's a lot of homeless people that are on the streets. There's a lot of people who are under the influence on the streets. We know that, you know, mental health is a natural thing that happens to some people, but it's also a, uh, a situation that occurs also through drug use. A lot of the people that are on the streets are drug addicts. Uh, the laws have changed. Uh, it's becoming more and more prevalent, as we know, with fentanyl and a lot of the other hardcore drugs. Those are drugs that you become addicted to, heroin, fentanyl, et cetera, and you need to fill your fix. And a lot of the ways that these people are doing it is through theft, going into businesses, Target, Old Navy, Home Depot, et cetera, and stealing items so that they can quickly um, sell it so that they can get that money so that they can get their fix. So we are seeing a lot of that. and. At, it's good that people are, that businesses are trying to address the issue. It's just too bad that we've now become a city where, um, where that's having to happen and that they're having to put this type of expense upon their business, which means then it gets eventually parlayed onto the customer. Um, and, you know, 
I remember, you know, everybody was talking about, you know, oh, Seattle's burning. Oh, San Francisco has these different apps for where, you know, defecation in the streets, homeless camps and needles all over the streets. We've always known that, you know, LA has sort of a skid row. Um, I'm sort of saddened at what I think we all do see um, a little bit more prevalently uh, on our streets. Drive behind sports arena, drive along sports arena. Um, I mean, you see it quite regularly. The panhandlers are starting to, you know, show up in mass again along Rosecrans Street. And it's not just our areas. Uh, we're seeing it citywide. And it, enough that Bill Walton and numerous people are up actively speaking that something needs to be done about the homeless issue. Um, so it, there is a ripple effect. And really quickly, just to finish my comment, I wanted to say that I popped into the tent that um, Jennifer Campbell and Mayor Todd Gloria were really stoked about because they thought it was going to help the situation in Midway. And I stopped by there during the rainy this recent rainstorm, because I was curious to see if if they were going into there and utilizing that midway tent. And the couple volunteers that were there, and I think there was like a staff member there too, said it had only been occupied like occupied five percent during that whole like recent rainstorm. And also, um, I don't think it's gone over ten percent occupancy. So the point of that tent too, I was hoping would help Midway, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So I, I, I don't know what, what the purpose of the tent was. So I didn't know that the occupancy was so low. Um, I will try to get uh, some information on that. And yeah, it, it would be, I, I, would, I would have hoped at this point it would be full. Um, and that tent though is for anybody in the city who the housing commission puts into there so it could be a local person but it also could be somebody from south bay being moved over there um so it's really you know, nice there's, there's pros and cons to that yes um and you know i always did enjoy or or appreciated the veterans tent um i mean as being sympathetic towards the veterans movement as as one myself i always thought that you know me we in the midway area really did carry a big burden and uh i think we saw successes uh, from the people who are our veterans that are out on the streets. So I would have liked to have seen the veteran tent come back. That being said, I, I will try to look into that, Margaret. I hadn't heard that it was that low of occupancy. I, I appreciate think it. Around, it. It shouldn't be. Hmm. But when you have rules and regulations, there's a segment of society that don't want to follow the rules and regulations, even though we see the benefit of it. We are in the middle of winter. Uh, and we have some rain and we're all upset about it. You know, we're like, oh, this is horrible. You know, but the rest of the country is suffering, you know, huge amounts of, re of record snowfall, et cetera. If you live in this type of climate and you have a drug addiction and you just want to not follow rules and sort of follow that, um, that, that vice you have, it's going to be hard to follow rules and regulations to go into a tent where they're going to tell you, you have to be in by a certain time. You have to behave a certain <laughs> way. So you cannot sit here um, and do drugs. So it's a challenge to, to say the least. So, all right, uh, let's go one last question. Linda, I see your hand up there. Go ahead. Hi, thanks. Uh, hi, officer. Um, can you tell us, is the department making any headway on uh, our recruitment efforts and decreasing our response time? So uh, we are fully funded to fill the academies uh, three or four times a year with at least 50 officers from San Diego. It's a regional academy, so it could have El Cajon, it could have Carlsbad, it could have Oceanside. Um, the other day I was at a meeting and the last couple of academies, apparently our numbers were lower than that. Um, I had heard like a 30 something, 37, 38. Uh, I was a little bit sort of disappointed by that. So we are still out there trying to do the outreach and trying to gain quality candidates. I am not in favor of lessening any rules regulations regarding becoming a candidate, such as passing a written test, you know, being morally honorable, you know, not having recent drug use. Uh, these are some of the challenges that we face. Um, some of these agencies in the past, which have lessened their uh, standards have ended up, uh, LA at one point was allowing people to pass felonies. That led to a lot of people coming on that then made bad decisions and were um, 
documented as after they became officers as not good officers. So I'm hoping that we don't do that to get the numbers up, but we are still facing that challenge. It's a nationwide challenge. Um, it's a nationwide challenge for military also. It's a nationwide challenge for a lot of businesses. There is this uh, problem with hiring people just to work. I don't know if we're just less people or, or whatnot, but uh, you know, hopefully we continue to address this. It is a priority of the city leadership. It is most certainly a priority of the San Diego Police Department. Um, and uh, so we are still trying to address that challenge. All right. Well, thank you, Officer Cirillo. We really appreciate your time. And um, we really appreciate everything that you and all the other officers do to, to help make our community safe. And and on the flip side, right, it's it's a big responsibility to be an officer. So I I, I kind of agree with your comment there that keeping good standards so that people that, that take on that job have the uh, the ability to do it as well as you do it. So thank you. Well, right, thank great. you, Frank. Happy New Year to everybody. And uh, please be safe. <laughs> And uh, I hope to see you all next month. All right, good. Thank you. All right, with that, we're going to go over to District 2, Jen Campbell's office, and we, we've got a new representative, Randy. So uh, we're going to let, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and then uh, let, give us a little update on what's going on in District 2. Yes. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, like um, Brett just mentioned, I'm the new community representative for Point Loma and the Midway communities. Uh, so I've been making my way around the different community meetings. So if you see me, um, I'm Randy again. Um, I do have a couple of updates. Uh, Officer Cirillo kind of already highlighted this in the previous um, conversation, but the sidewalk vendor ordinance has taken effect in the beach and shoreline areas. Uh, this ordinance will allow vendors to come into the formal economy while setting balance regulations to support vendor compliance, promote public health, and protect uh, access to the city's public spaces, including coastal areas. Permit enforcement will go into effect starting February 1st. Um, second, uh, given the current or the previous uh, weekend in the rain, uh, the city's transportation department and other departments have been directed by the city COO uh, to work on pothole repairs across the city. So if you guys have potholes in your areas, please uh, fill out a get it done report so that the city team and city crews can actually pinpoint where these are to better uh, have an um, idea as to where they need to address or fill these potholes. Um, also, as you guys know, the 74th council has been back in session and committees meetings have begun. Uh, so the council member is on three committees. She is a chair of the community neighborhood services committee. She's a member of the environment committee and a member of the public safety committee. Um, and she will be working on those three policy areas for the year of 2023. Um, and that's all for me. If you guys have any questions, please um, ask. Um, and I'll go ahead and share my email on the uh, the chat as well. Um, just a quick question, Randy. Can you um, can you tell us um, whether Manny is, is Manny still here or is he gone? And then can you give us a little bit of a background on um, on wh wh where you're from or wh when you graduated and all that? Yes. Uh, so Manny is is uh, still on the team. He is uh, the community representative for Ocean Beach and Old Town. Um, so he will be handling those two communities. Uh, I am his twin brother. So uh, yes, we are related. Um, but I just graduated uh, or recently graduated from the University of San Diego with my bachelor's in international relations. I'm currently still at the University of San Diego earning my master's in international relations. Um, I was born and raised here in San Diego County. Uh, my parents are from Mexico, so I speak English and Spanish. And um, I, uh, I believe it was Angela had asked me before the meeting has started if I was familiar uh, with the area of Point Loma. Um, and I had, like I said, I'm a student from the University of San Diego, so I did most of my shopping and, and re really all most of my activities in the Point Loma Midway, uh, the peninsula. So I'm, I'm familiar with the area. Perfect, perfect. Any questions for Andy? Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, um, Randy, first of all, welcome. Glad to have you on board. But uh, I'm curious why the decision was made to uh, separate OB and Point Loma, or separate the responsibilities, because we're two communities joined at the hip and suffer from many of the same problems and confront the same issues. It seemed like it would, to me, it would be better to have someone con uh, concentrate on both areas rather than having two separate representatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I 
I didn't, I did not make those decisions uh, as to what communities were assigned to whom. Um, all I can say is that we're a team and we work together and collaborate. We're all representing uh, District 2, so we always are collaborating on many projects and, and um, community uh, assignments. So, uh, and like I said, we are brothers, so we hmm. have an even closer bond and definitely um, talking on a daily about the many issues that Point Loma and Ocean Beach is face. So it's it's certainly not going to be a problem. And and like I said, it's it's one collaborative effort from the entire team. So um, I, I will continue to have those conversations with my brother and obviously uh, update the council member herself when it comes well, to. And, and, and I get that. I'm just wondering what the basis for that decision was to, to separate them. Again, is there I, a I, reason? I, I don't know what the reasoning behind okay. that was. That decision was not made by me. Uh, Margaret, you got a question? Yes. Can you get back to us with an answer? Because I'm just curious as well. But I guess my question for you, Randy, is are you privy to our wants and needs for Point Loma, what our goals are? And if not, can we send you those? Sorry. And I keep you accountable? The first part. Um, do you happen to know what our wants and needs are for our community of Point Loma right now, currently? What our issues are? I, sorry, you cut out. I'm so, I just, I don't know if it's my internet, but. I don't think you, you want to hear me. <laughs> no, I, I, I heard just this kidding. In March. No, I'm, I'm just saying, are you aware of our goals, our problems and issues? Because we've had them now for quite some time. Um, are you prepared to look into our goals and issues, get to know them and report back to us on our updates? Yes, I mean, uh, I've been in the position for a month now, so I've been receiving a lot of the feedback, and I've also made my rounds around the other organizations and committees like the Sunset Cliffs, Point Loma Association. Okay, good. Um, and so I've been familiar with what's going on in the Point Loma community. Uh, awesome. It is my job and my responsibility to connect you guys to City Hall and vice versa. So I will be working closely with the issues that arise and making sure that they're addressed at City Hall. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Well, welcome, Randy. We'll, we'll look forward to working with you. And, and I and I like Manny, so I'm glad to hear, hear you're still here. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. Just All stick right. around. Put, yeah. Put your email in the chat so that if people want to send you ideas and, and concerns, they can do that. All right. And then from the state assembly, we have a new representative, Margaret Doyle. So, Margaret, we're honored to have you here, and um, we'd love to love to get a report from you on what's going on at the state assembly. Thank you so much, Fred. I apologize. I'm in my car. I was having Wi-Fi issues um, where I was. This is not my normal office, I promise you. Uh, my name is Margaret. It's not often I run into another Margaret, so I keep thinking you're talking to me when you are, in fact, not. Um, I work for Assemblymember Tasha Brenner Horvath. We are new to the district. Previously, Tasha's district was the 76th up in North County, so Oceanside, Carlsbad, Encinitas, Vista, and Camp Pendleton. After November, with the election and the redistricting, we are now Assembly District 77, kind of like the country of Chile. It's really long and skinny, or California actually, really long and skinny down the coast. Um, we still start up in Carlsbad, and we go all the way down through Coronado uh, along the coast. So that includes Del Mar, Solana Beach, Encinitas, Carlsbad, La Jolla, Ocean Beach, Mission Beach, Pacific Beach, Point Loma, downtown, and Coronado. It's a mouthful. It's crazy. Um, so I right now am in charge of the southernmost part of the district. Our district office is in Carlsbad, but I have a little leg up. I do live downtown, so I'm a little more familiar with the city of San Diego. Um, Tasha herself is from Encinitas, born and raised. She started on the planning commission went to city council, ran for assembly in 2018, and has been a really big advocate for transportation and mobility issues, women's reproductive health, and the big one right now for her is environmental issues, which I think as I've been getting familiar with the district a little bit more, it sounds like there's a lot of concern for environmental issues. So I'm really excited to get to know y'all. I'll put my email in the chat as well. Um, you can always email me or call our office with any questions. We're always here to chat with you. And then I do have a really brief update because this session, Tasha has been on it. She's already introduced two bills, um, one of which I think will probably be a little more relevant to you guys. So I'll start with the less relevant one first. AB 45 is the 
pelvic floor therapy, re, pelvic floor rehabilitative therapy bill. It's a mouthful. Um, basically, it's making pelvic floor therapy a standard of care for women after they have given birth, because right now it's not standard of care. You have to be prescribed pelvic floor therapy. Happy to answer any questions about that one. Um, but I will move on to AB 47, which is our blue carbon bill. So it requires that for large developments in coastal zones, which spoiler alert, our district has a lot of coastline, large developments in coastal zones and coastal areas have to contribute or develop new um, blue carbon projects. Not a science person. I can give you a very, very surface level update about blue carbon. And then I will send you the fact sheet. Blue carbon is basically, um, it is carbon that is captured from uh, the environment in kind of the way that trees filter through greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide. Uh, certain types of seaweed uh, can do the same thing. Like I said, not a science person, but I can get you some information if you so require it. Um, happy to answer any questions for any of you guys. Uh, and I'll put my email in the chat as well. All right. Well, Margaret, really, really appreciate the update. And I'm just going to ask Matt, who's our, our scientist. Matt, is that is that blue carbon explanation? How does that sound to you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, as as a scientist, so son of a aquatic plant biologist, uh, yes, uh, M M Margaret's right. Good job, Margaret. Good job, Margaret. God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm so scared. Thank God. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I, I would also add in addition to things like seaweed, it's also wetlands, uh, mudflats, bogs, pe uh, peat bogs, anything that really takes the carbon down into the into the aquatic environment. So, so you are right, Margaret. We're definitely in interested in that. Good. Okay. Yeah, I'll send you guys the fact sheets for both bills, um, and I'll keep you updated. We're looking for. This is great. You guys are so interested. Our legislative director, Celia, has been asking for any type of support we can get any cities or community groups such as yourselves that want to support the bill. Um, she keeps telling us, promote the bill, promote the bill. So glad to hear you're interested. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you may have heard early in the meeting, I, I mentioned, but, um, you know, there's, a, I think there's 54 planning boards, but we're the only planning board in, in, in San Diego that I know of that we create our own environmental committee because we cared about the environment. And so, and that was, Mandy was was instrumental in that, but uh, and now we have people like Jack, who's a local member. So we have an environmental committee. We're 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 definitely involved and and, and committed to those issues. So thank you. Yeah, I did hear that. That kind of piqued my interest a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. And then with that, I'm going to move on, and I'm going to introduce Avon, uh, who is a new airport uh, authority representative, and and she'd like to introduce herself. And I. I just want to say that I got the honor of serving on the Airport Noise Advisory Committee for about six years, and now Paul Webb is our our, our representative. But we like working with the airport. The airport uh, is a is a good neighbor to us, and we like to work with, with the airport on on those issues. So so welcome. Thank you so much, Fred, and Happy New Year, everyone. Nice to meet you all virtually. Um, yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Ivan Velasquez, and I am the new external relations specialist at the airport authority. And what that really means is I'm gonna be focusing on community outreach and community relations. Um, so going out to um, you know all community planning groups, especially ones that are near the airport um, and really focused on providing um, updates on our new terminal one project, as well as just general updates to all of you. Um, I know specifically around construction impacts as well. Um, we do have some construction impacts up, be, upcoming um, this month, and actually one is uh, starting tomorrow. I don't know if all of you have heard, but um, there will be the closure of um, Point Loma and Harbor Drive. So that street is going to be closing starting tomorrow, um, and that will be effective for two weeks. Um, so there will be signs for all of you if you do happen to go to the airport. Um, there will be signs to detour. And what that essentially will do is just take you around down um, Harbor Island or North Harbor Drive and make you make a U-turn to go back um, and access Point Loma community. Um, so I just want to provide a quick update. We really 
Um, also, a, a quick, uh, actually very important to note that I'm actually heading out to maternity leave um, next month, So, but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to introduce myself. Um, so I will be coming back um, after my maternity leave, and um, it piqued my interest to hear the AB45 pelvic floor therapy. <laughs> Personally, I would support that. Um, so um, yeah, happy to answer any questions. Um, I will be a resource to all of you, um, but not quite immediately just yet um, because I am heading out on maternity leave, but I will be coming um, to these meetings ongoing and would love to be a, a helpful resource to all of you. Okay, Paul, go ahead. You're on mute though. Paul, you gotta unmute yourself. Uh, I'll, I'll learn this eventually. Um, I just said, wanted to say that I, I flew in late last night from Florida and that closure has already taken place and it really caught me by surprise when our taxi driver started heading toward downtown on North Harbor Drive. Um, and it really added quite a bit to my taxi fare. So Paul, where exactly is the closure? Well, there used to be a, an exit uh, from the airport's internal roadway system where you could turn right on North Harbor Drive and head out toward Point Loma. Right. Now you have to take the downtown exit, head down North Harbor Drive toward downtown, turn off uh, to where the rent cars used to be, where there was uh, quite a traffic scrum there at, at 10 o'clock last night with uh, various cars trying to figure out where to go and, and head back to North Harbor Drive to head back toward Point Loma, Ocean Beach. And um, there was, you know, uh, for having that big of a change, I was startled that there was no traffic control uh, or informational signage or anything. But our, our cab driver, of course, knew because he's been experiencing it. But so it affects uh, you if can you, work a little bit better on traffic control there. Yeah, it just affects if you're leaving the airport and you're trying to get to Point Loma. Yes, as yeah. far as I know. Okay, well, I just I just drove home on Harbor Drive and was you go through pretty quickly. So, go ahead, Don. That's the it's it's if you're exiting the Terminal One um, exit to Harbor Island, Point Loma. If you're you if you're exiting Terminal One and you're used to turning that like he mentioned into the exit to Harbor Island Point Loma, if yeah. that's closed for constructions because we're we're taking down that bridge. Um, and so vehicles leaving Terminal 1, they'll need to use that downtown exit. Well, this is actually leaving Terminal 2, uh, the same thing occurs. Oh yeah, Terminal 2 is also being impacted. That started around um, earlier this week. Mm -hmm. um, but there will be also Terminal 1 passengers will be affected as well starting yeah. tomorrow. Some informational signage would be very helpful. Uh, there was really nothing. And yeah, Yvonne, that's, how, how long that's do you great. think this is going to last? Oh, sorry. How long is this going to last, Yvonne? Two weeks. So um, starting tomorrow for Terminal 1 exit. Terminal 2, I have, I have to get back to you. Um, start, still learning the date. Sorry, I'm very yeah. new to the Airport Authority. Um, but in terms of that Terminal 1 exit impact, uh, the Point Loma closure, um, it will run through Saturday, February 4th. So it's a two-week construction impact. Um, but Paul, I, I do appreciate that feedback. That's certainly why I want to continue to attend these meetings and report back to our teams to see what we could do on our end. Yeah. Go ahead, Don. Does that affect traffic entering uh, the airport? from Harbor Drive? It may, um, but if you've been uh, visiting our airport, you may already see that there's already a congestion because mm -hmm. of the new Terminal 1 project. Um, we don't expect it to increase the congestion significantly, but it should stay congest con normally congested as what we've been seeing so far. Well, not congestion. Are you saying that that intersection is closed? The which one? I'm sorry. If you are on Harbor Drive and you want to turn in to the airport to go to Terminal One, are you affected? No. So it's if you're exiting Terminal Two and Terminal One. No entering. 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 You should be able to enter the airports. Um, with no issue. 
what they've done now with terminal one, you'll see like a, like a curved roadway to get into that. You, you will see that there's congestion normally there um, just because of, you know, there's just a lot of construction happening, but there's no closures to the entrance of the airport. Has there been any add... mention in the press? What was that? Has there been any mention in the, on the formal media? Yes, we are starting to um, share our construction impact updates um, out to the media. Um, I know we're working with um, social media and paid social media or paid media to report out to the news outlets. Um, and it's also you can find information online um, of the new Terminal One website. I'm, ha I'm happy to provide this information to Fred. Would it be you? Um, just to share that, um, you can easily sign up for a newsletter as well, just so you can stay up to date to those um, impacts. Okay. Sam, did you have a question? Yes. Um, I wanted to see if you're heading sort of south on Harbor, is the exit for Terminal 2 affected? Going south. Can you repeat that? Sorry, Sam. Yeah, if you're going south and you want to turn left on to Terminal 2, is that impacted as well? I will have to get back to you. I want to say no, <laughs> okay. um, but I'll definitely have to get back to you. Apologies. Um, I'll, I'll pull the new hire flag, um, okay. but I'll definitely get back to you with more details on that. All right, Brad, you have a question or comment? Could I just uh, I actually had a question of Paul. Um, okay. So Paul, the normal turn, you come up, you sweep down and you go to the Point Loma side and you're gonna go right on Harbor Drive, that's set. That's gone. Could you go straight onto Harbor Drive and make a U-turn and come back? No. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, traffic was directed- left. Traffic was directed on the flyover ramp that heads towards downtown. Oh. Oh, that whole area. Oh, yes. I get it. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I got to go to the airport. Yeah. And, and getting back. into the airport from, from Point Loma is really no issue at this time. From everywhere else, uh, I don't believe that the closure uh, affects anyone else, but it's it's already a bad situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's and, a mess down there. But. And I can follow up as well with maps so that you can visualize, you can visually see um, the detours. Um, so I'll follow up with Fred with that as well. Okay, yeah, you send send those to me, and I'll I'll circulate them around. So Sam, go ahead. One yeah, last well, question. I wanted to have Yvonne put her email in the chat or whatever if she has them already. That would be good. Can you do that, Yvonne? Yep. Thank you. All right. We appreciate you having you here. We'll miss you, but good luck with your pregnancy, and and uh, and we'll we'll look forward to seeing you again. Thanks so much, everyone. Yeah, congratulations. Best All right, uh, we are going to move on, and uh, you guys are going to see on the uh, project review we had no no uh, items, so that that'll be a quick item. I'm just going to say I talked to Joe about it a little bit, and just from an informational standpoint, I Joe told me that his understanding is that ADUs have now been pulled from planning board review. And so the city's not going to have us comment on ADUs. And that was a that was a big deal because there's lots of ADUs and there's a big push in that area. So that has um, sort of dramatically changed what project review had and and their backlog is is questionable. So um, it's just an interesting development. I, I won't make any editorial comments other than I mean I think it was good that we we made comments on ADUs because I think we made those projects better, but mm -hmm. I just want you to know that. Go ahead, Sam. And I think also this is a negative for those uh, controversial ADUs uh, for the uh, community surrounding the controversial ADU because it's just going to uh, wind up where the citizens have no access to get any comments in, really. At least I'm concerned about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, just, just from our conversations and trying to make sure that the ADU was appropriately situated, that that had setbacks, that there was parking, that, um, you know, 
took in environmental concerns. I mean, all, all those things made the, the projects that got through better. And the only ones that we ever voted down were people that, that had projects that, you know, I'll just say seemed a lot less responsible than, than that, than they could have been if they, with a little help. So it, it, it may be an area for concern coming up. All right, uh, and then we'll move on to the informational items. Um, Corla will be going to the CPC meeting later this month, and, I, and she'll report back to us as to what, what happens on, on, on those various issues, but I think we've already talked about that largely. So uh, I'll go over to Don. Do you have an update for us on, on the Cannon Street Pocket Park or the Voltaire Bridge? I do. Uh, the city has put the Pocket Park in its expedite mode. Uh, no chuckles from me on after <laughs> eight and a half years. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm told that if the bids come in at a reasonable amount, that's an if, uh, construction could begin uh, this summer. How many bidders are, uh, how many proposed bidders are there for that? I don't know the number of bidders or the amounts, but uh, my understanding is they need to get th at least three bids. Okay. That is that is typical for a for a city project, yes. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's good news, Don. Great job, and I really appreciate you. Okay, and on the on the on the uh, Voltaire Street Bridge, I haven't connected with Joe, um, and uh, the. Uh, department uh, is receptive to this application. We need to get our paperwork in. Okay. Thank you, Don. All right, and now I'm going to I'm going to turn to our action items. So you see, the first one is uh, the March 2023 election. So, and we need to uh, uh, appoint an election chair and an appoint an election committee. So. And my thought on that is the way we've done this traditionally, right? Um, tonight is a night to, to appoint the committee, and then we'll give the committee a month to confirm exactly how they want to run the election. I think last time was largely in person. Maybe Angela can tell us a little bit about that to, to refresh our recollection. But um, but then at the at the February meeting, we'll we'll set sort of the formal schedule for candidate forum, the exact timing for the election and, uh, and, and all that. So um, as part of that, my, my reading is that we have Nic Nicole, Burgess, Mandy, Don, Angela, and Paul Webb are the people with expiring terms. And out of that group, I don't really know what anybody's gonna do, but I believe that Don has been on for nine years, so his, his his he may be termed out. So that's just a a testament to your service, Don. But so it sounds like we'll have one one opening for sure, and depending on what everybody else decides to do. I plan on running again. Same here. All right. Well, Angela, you, you can't be the you can't be the election chair then. <laughs> so. The typically the the before we vote on it, the election chair goes to the first vice chair, which would be Margaret. But Angela, can you can you just remind us how we how we ran the election last year? Well, we put out notices on you know everywhere that we could think of, next door um, website. Uh, we announced it at various groups, and then we set up a time at the library to come by and and cast your votes. And we just had in-person voting. Yes. Okay. Okay. And that and that seemed to work pretty well. I thought last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. It did. All right. And uh, just for the community there, yeah, we have um, uh, there'll be five spots that are open, and so the the top five vote getters, depending on how many people we have run, um, those will be the people that will be elected to for a, a three-year term on the. Uh, Point Loma Planning Board, and currently, the way the um, um, bylaws are are written is that you need to have attended at least one planning board meeting to be eligible to um, to run. 
And so I, I'll mention that for anybody who's watching this on the video, the people that are here know now, but, but so um, anybody who's here, Eric Law, anybody who's maybe thinking about running, um, you're qualified because you're, you're, you've been in a meeting. And typically we, we vote uh, to allow that if people um, attend the candidates forum, we'll also count that as a qualifying event, but, but those, that's one of the prerequisites to run. And so I want to announce that. So if people are thinking about potentially running that, that might watch this video or telling a friend, you might want to encourage them to, to attend the February meeting if they haven't been to one yet thus far. So with that, um, I guess I'd open it up I, and ask Margaret whether, you know, as the first vice chair and you're the person that gets to be in charge of the election, are you are you willing to step up and do that? I have tons of experience. I did the one prior to Angela's, and that was probably the most difficult one I think we've ever done during COVID. <laughs> um, I would be happy to do it if I can get some of the people that I've worked with in the past join me. And um, I know Paul Grimes just sent me a message now too, and he definitely wants to be to be considered to be part of that election committee. He's done it with us with I think both me, you, Brad, and Fred, he's been yeah. part of the election. For some of you guys that don't know Paul, he's been part, he's a real amazing volunteer for the PCPB and runs our website. And he's been, I mean, an instrumental part of the election process. So I definitely want him to be part of the committee. So I'll do it, but I would really love like if Brad would be, willing to help because he's gone through it already <laughs> he knows how to do it and fred i don't know if you if you can can help i know you've chaired it as well and i would just like to have a little bit more of experience people that have done it already so we don't really have to reinvent the wheel um but of course anybody else that wants to be part of it and is interested it's it's so, not uh, it's I, not a real hard I, difficult tina you're um, interested role. Yeah, I would be more than happy to help you. I you. don't really want to do much more in my activity level, but <laughs> none I would of be us more do. Step up. I've done um, no experience with the point of appellate board voting situation, but I've done the like elections and volunteered for the election voting. So I get the that point of it. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so my, my suggestion, Margaret, yeah. my suggestion would be that I will help. Yeah, awesome. my su suggestion is that we is that we keep it simple. Yes, and, I mean the time before we needed it, right? That was COVID, and yeah, we had mail in ballots, and we had on uh, the, no. the whole, you know, it was a nightmare. So, I think that we got we had a large turnout, and we just had people sh go to the library where they could yeah. come and drop off their ballots, and that that seemed much simpler. And so I, I I think it's it was very effective, and we had a plenty of turnout. So I don't. I, I'd I like to go that route. Yeah, that'd be my suggestion. So I'm happy to be an ex officio member on your, your committee. Yay! <laughs> and Brad, are you Thank willing God. to volunteer? Brad, please. <laughs> you know the drill. <laughs> well, I've only done it, what, four times? You've done it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, it's just fine. Just sit there and check the IDs, Brad. <laughs> okay, I can do that part. <laughs> okay. yeah. I don't want to count. I know, I know. Fred will be the counter. <laughs> no, but anybody else, how many do we have to have? I think oh. you just need to have a, you need to have at least a couple. So you've got, you've got Tina, you've got Brad. Paul and Brian. Robert, Robert volunteered in the chat. Oh, he did? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Robert, oh, okay, okay, there. Hey. All right. Go, Robert. Is that good, right, Fred? So, uh, I'm going to break. I mean, we could do this as one motion if you want, or we can do it in three, but I think we should do, let's break it into three. Can, can, can we make a motion to have Margaret be the election chair? So moved. All right. Do I have a second? It's Paul Webb. Okay. All, all of those in favor of having Margaret be the chair oh. for the election. Oh, God. Right. There you go. You are in any opposed. All right, Margaret, you are unanimously picked. And then can I have a motion? I think that we have a co election committee of Tina Compton, Brad Heron, and Robert Tripp Jackson. And also Paul Grimes. Paul Grimes. And, and Paul Grimes, Grimes. As, as, Jeez, the, we as, need him. <laughs> as a community rep. Okay. I'll second that. Who, who's, who made the motion? 
I, I can make the motion. Okay, Margaret made the motion. No, Mandy, Mandy. Mandy. Mandy, Mandy made the motion. Second by Paul Webb. All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? All right, that passes. All right, Margaret, you got a committee and we got an election. So but you didn't you didn't say your name and Brad's. You guys are on there, right? Brad is on the committee. I, I'm I'm an ex officio, which is yeah. I, I'll, I'll, volunteer. I'll volunteer. Okay, I'm I appreciate that. It, but I'm I'm on every committee. So you I'll, all I'll heard you. that. You all heard that, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. By our bylaws, <laughs> he is on every so committee. The counter, okay, all. thank you, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, and I and I think you know we've had several really good elections. We have a lot of people that want to want to run, and we like to see new people getting involved. So. Um, I'll, I'll encourage if there's people out there watching this that, that want to get involved and make a difference in your community, this is this is a way to do it and this is a way to give back to the community. So give it give it consideration. And, it, and if anybody out there ever had any questions about what it's like to serve on the planning board and they wanted to, to contact me, my information's on, on the website, my uh, and, you know, send me an email or give me a call and I'd be happy to talk to you. All right. Good. All right. So the next one, I'm going to turn this over to is our next action. I'm going to turn this over to to Matt and Mandy. But uh, there's been a effort by Long Range Planning with some help from I think the Transportation uh, Committee to to prepare a draft letter on our uh, priorities for the 2024 budget for the city. So Matt, can I turn it over to you? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, so. Th th thanks for the opportunity, Fred, um, and also thank you to Mandy for helping uh, take this up and champion it in the uh, transportation and uh, traffic subcommittee as well. Um, so ho hopefully everyone's had a chance to look at it by now, or if not, perhaps you can do it uh, now. Um, so uh, just for perspective, back in you know, kind of like late September, early uh, October, the city uh, requested re requested um, uh, budget proposals for, for the different districts. And I'm pasting in chat right now, a link to our, uh, uh, our, our district's uh, budget memo um, that uh, Jen Campbell's office put out. And so, as this is wind, as the proposals are winding their way through different kind of budget analysts and uh, other city offices, uh, we wanted to take it upon ourselves in long range planning to weigh in on what are some of the uh, priorities for funding in the community. And so we started by trying to break it into two parts. And so uh, last meeting in November, y'all uh, took up for discussion the letter we had drafted as it related to uh, specifically to capital improvement projects. And so then what we brought up this time are projects that uh, weren't necessarily capital improvement projects, or uh, they were, you know, considerations that we've previously talked about in, uh, you know, things such as transportation uh, subcommittee and, you know, ended up as drafted letters, things that we can, you know, kind of remind our uh, city office that, you know, are our priorities for the peninsula vis-a-vis -vis things we've requested previously. So we tried to basically collate all these into a new letter to, you know, basically sign on to as part two from what we uh, presented to you uh, last in November. So I, I guess in short, um, I, I, I could ask, would it be helpful for me to screen share so you can all see um, the draft letter in the I meeting think just or... for the just for the record and 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 so that people that might see this later yeah if you if you could screen share just quickly Matt you don't have to read the whole thing but if you just go through it quickly and sort of give a summary and I and I think there's two parts so maybe you can show the the part that was approved by long range planning and then and just briefly outline the part that was approved by the traffic committee yeah okay um I'll, I'll need permission from the host to be able to uh share my screen or mm -hmm. Or, or Mark, Mar if it's easier, Margaret could share her screen with the PDF that was circulated um, with the meeting announcement. E either way works for me. Oh, Who's the host? Margaret, you're the host. Can you can you help out, Matt? Or if she stepped away from her computer, uh, I can I can drop a link um, to the letter in the chat. 
Yeah. Why don't, why don't we go ahead and do that? And then, and maybe you could just give us a general summary and people can pull it up and look at it. Yeah. Okay. So this should be the link to it hosted on our website. Mm -hmm. And so to kind of quickly outline it, um, basically the structure of the letter is what we had uh, drafted and approved uh, unanimous, unanimously as a committee in long range planning. And so uh, it, everything in black text in this letter was what was approved coming out of long range planning. Then everything in blue text is supposed to represent what was added uh, when the letter was taken up in uh, transportation and traffic subcommittee, um, where it was also uh, unanim unanimously approved, if I recall correctly. Um, yes. So th thank you, Mandy. Um, and so we, we kind of split this into three different categories. And so some of these were uh, taking wording that was lifted right out of that budget memo that I also linked to in the uh, in the Zoom chat. So uh, what, what we were hoping to do, because we didn't have time to weigh in and give suggestions to D2 office before they submitted this memo, we wanted to basically reiterate things that we saw in the memo that we thought aligned with our priorities here in the peninsula, and then also add a few new things. And so items that have an asterisk uh, next to them are uh, ones that were not originally in the D2 budget memo, but uh, the majority of them were things that have been discussed by this uh, uh, board previously, and we've tried to incorporate, uh, you know, links such as when it's appropriate to a letter that the board has already voted on and approved. So with that kind of context in mind, to break them down, there's kind of three main sections here. And so one of them uh, relates to service items. And so uh, the street sweeping program was one item identified in uh, the D2 memo to uh, to, to basically uh, try to increase uh, the funding allocated to this. And we wanted to you know, make a couple suggestions specific to um, the peninsula and also point out a letter that we had uh, approved back in our meeting uh, in March of this year. Um, we also included things such as ve vegetation encroachment on bike lanes, uh, public safety, and uh, parks and environment concerns. And if anyone has questions, we can kind of dive into these more, but I'm just trying to highlight things at a, you know, uh, top level now. And so then our next section uh, were related to traffic safety items, which again, uh, were drawn straight from the list of the budget memo itself, or uh, here were items that we have uh, previously uh, discussed as a planning board and approved such uh, letters. Um, so for instance, we have things like the intersection improvements at Westbound Sports Arena Boulevard in West Point Loma, uh, West Mission Bay Drive Bridge Connections, uh, Fraud and Voltaire Flashing Beacon, the Scott Street uh, Traffic and Pedestrian Safety Request, uh, K Street Design, or basically intersection kind of redesign at Catalina, Santa Barbara, and Hill Street. Um, uh, looking at the Nimitz and I-8 traffic safety request, and then also uh, traffic calming and safety improvements to Nimitz and Evergreen. And so then the third uh, category was uh, Loma street improvements. And so these cover things such as repaving. Um, and so some of these we had you know, taken up and championed before through this board, such as Oleander Drive and Oleander Place. This has been something the community has brought to our attention multiple times. Uh, and so that it, we were pleased to see that that had made the budget memo. And we wanted to just reiterate that you know, if cuts have to be made later, we want to see this remain a priority. So things like Oleander Drive and Barnard Street, um, as well as uh, Valeta Street between Camulos and Famosa Boulevard. And then uh, we also wanted to add uh, Evergreen between uh, Canyon and Talbot and Warden between uh, Bob and Valeta. All right, well, that, that seems like a pretty good explanation, Matt. And I, I do actually like the fact that that you 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 and, and Mandy and everybody on the committee has kind of linked a lot of these items to to specific projects that we we sort of approved and asked for in the past, and I think this is a, you know, I think that really helps to make it more more powerful and and, and more precise. So anyway, uh, with that, do we have any questions for for Matt or for Mandy? Okay. 
No questions? Okay. Any comments? Nothing? Robert has his hand up. His hand's been up. Robert, yeah. do you have a question? Oh. Question. I'd have my hand up. Okay. Well, with that, do we have a motion or anything like that to approve the letter? Uh, I'll move to approve. I'll second. Okay. Motion by Sam, second by Margaret. Does any further discussion? The two committees right. did put a lot of effort into it together and got all the committee members to weigh in. So it really took some time to, to get it down to where it is now. So I, I think it's a, a great letter and it's going to uh, hope then Matt and Mandy. Well, and I, I, I second that and it's just, and it's been, you know, it's been years that we, we wanted to try to do something like this to sort of lay out what we really care about in the community and put it in writing so that, so there's a written record so we can, I'm going to send this to Randy eventually and Randy, you're going to get it. So this is go, Randy, here are our priorities. So more yeah. like our list of demands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any um, other questions or comments, Sam? Yeah, I was just going to comment that this was done at a particularly um, pressing time of year, starting the end of the year, and this holiday season, et cetera. So there was a lot of uh, extra effort by a lot of people on the committees. Okay, Brad, I saw your hand up, go ahead. Um, just a comment to Randy. Randy, we've had an issue that a lot of these letters and priorities that we've had in the community don't seem to stick at district two. It's just they fall by the wayside. So we keep generating these things and we keep talking about these issues. And it's like, they just are not, you need to have a historical memory of what transpires here and the things that we want done should at least, if they don't get done, at least they have a, a master list and have the stuff on there and then line it out when it finally goes away, like Don's Park at 10 years from now. Yeah. Um, so anyway, just a, just an FYI, It'd be nice if you guys, if we're on the same page. All right, any other discussion? All right, well then, time to vote. Um, I guess that I will do a roll call just just for to be formal here. But uh, all those in the fit either vote in favor or against the, the um, letter. Uh, I'm sorry with you, Margaret. Yes. Mandy. Yes. Don. Yes. Robert. Yes. Angela. Yes. Nicole. Yes. Tina. Yes. Matt. Yes. Sam. Yes. Paul. Yes. Okay. Yes. Brad. Brad, are you a yes? I'm like Paul. It'll, I'll eventually get it. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Okay, 11 nothing, it passes. Great job, guys. And women. <laughs> Great job. All right. Okay, that brings us to our last uh, action item, which is um, related to West Point Loma Boulevard and Nimitz. Mandy, you're up. Yeah, yeah, fine. Save the best for last, right? <laughs> yes, um, good evening. Uh, yes, we um, did discuss the right turn um, at the intersection of Nimitz and West Point Loma Boulevard. Um, we did discuss um, a, a few mitigations. We had had it um, for a discussion at last month's meeting, but we just didn't get around to it. There's a lot going on in the community. So um, I did share it with the group. Um, we are asking for um, a variety of mitigations to help with the right turn um, when people are heading northbound on Nimitz and making a right turn to West Point Loma Boulevard, there's this crosswalk there. Um, and there's been some issues with visibility. It was recently mentioned in um, the news. That's what brought it to our attention. We weren't able to reach out to any neighbors because they didn't identify him in the news segment. 
but um, we did come up with a really good discussion about things that we'd like to recommend for the city to be seen there. And so the first one at the discretion of the city, we respectfully, blah, blah, we respectfully request the following, additional signage to alert drivers of the crossing area, to have pedestrian crossing striping uh, be painted on the street leading to the crossing area, rumble bumps installed before the crossing area, um, an installation of a raised crosswalk, and then um, one of the recommendations we uh, had asked for was as well an installation of a street light over the area to promote visibility of, pedestri of pedestrians in the dark. Um, those were just some of the mitigations that we um, recommended and approved. It was a, a unanimous approval in um, traffic and transportation. And so at this time, I'd like to go ahead and open it up for group discussion. I just had a question. What what is the what's the installation of a raised cross crosswalk? What is what does that sort of mean? That would be like a concrete, you know, um, it, it, think of it as like a big speed bump that would create a big, uh, you know, a speed bump, a raise. So it would consist of construct uh, a concrete for the, you know, for the uh, material of that. There wouldn't be any um, light, like lighting installed along like any track lighting, but it would create like a big speed bump. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions uh, for, for Mandy? Brad? Are, are you asking for all of these to be done or the suggestion that we'd like, we would like all of these, but because if, if you predicate the lighting It'll never get done, as we know, right? Yeah. I mean, if you if it has to be in be included, I mean, are they going to be able to pick and choose what they do? Because I agree with you that something needs to be done there. But in the letter, we we list that these are the mitigations that we would like to see, and we leave it up to the discretion of the city. Oh, okay, to right. that just you know, because again, you know, that, that common question of hey, we're not. We're not um, traffic engineers and we don't want to pigeonhole the city into these mitigations that may not work well. So um, that's why we've kind of created the letter as, hey, these are some possibilities, but leave it up to the city to make that decision. Fine. Good. Thank yeah. you, Brad. Any other questions, comments? How about a motion, Mandy? All right, well, I'd like to make a motion to approve the letter um, as is to um, send those recommendations to the city to improve the intersection of northbound Nimitz at West Point Loma Boulevard. A second. Got a second by, a motion by Mandy, second by Angela. Any further discussion? I just wanna add that this letter as well took a lot of constructing and comments and feedback and it wasn't just written up one time around it kept going back and forth so we we did as that committee do a lot of research and and uh it, it's again really well written and i think it'll hopefully make a difference all right um you know it's raining yes I know, it's I can hear. It's boring. <laughs> it wasn't on the fourth like... it wasn't on the forecast no i thought we were <laughs> done with it brandy what's up with that <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm hearing the it's it's pouring down. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. With that, uh, any other um, any other comments? Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. We're time to vote. Margaret. Yes. Mandy. Yes. Don. Yes. Robert. Yes. Angela. Yes. Nicole. Yes. Tina. Yes. Matt. Yes. Sam. Yes. Paul. Yes. Brad. Yes. All right. 11 nothing. Congratulations. I do Good appreciate letter. the support. And I did want to just uh, mention um, at our last meeting, uh, we did come up to um, the discussion of Rosecrans. That that stretch of road is such a long stretch with the, within our community. And so um, being that it's our last um, meeting with the current board that we have before the election, 
we've um, voted to make Rosecrans our only priority for our next traffic and transportation meeting. Um, I am going to request um, Muska Lake to attend if she's interested in and just see if there's some opportunities to have the community come out and voice um, what types of mitigations they would like to see improve that stretch of Rosecrans. Um, so that will be in February. Um, and just really quick, I'll, I'll reach out to the traffic uh, subcommittee on this, but uh, it does fall on one of the holiest of holidays, uh, Valentine's Day. So <laughs> if, if any of the sweethearts have any um, plans, we can move the meeting to another day so that we can um, accommodate those plans as well. So. All right, well, Brad. Maybe love you, Mandy. Well, I know your husband's him. probably the most romantic oh. <laughs> of all of them. So. Well, he's got to earn his keep. <laughs> <laughs> no, just joking. I'm just joking. And Randy, I want to say thank you. Uh, welcome. I met him um, at the Sunset Cliffs uh, meeting earlier this week, but I have to say, I feel like I'm watching um, Freaky Friday because I, I just, it, you look very, you know, you're a twin. So it's like, is that really Randy? Or are they just playing a game? <laughs> <That's>... Randy, Brad. <laughs> They're keeping you, us Randy. on our toes. Yeah. Thank you, Randy, for staying through. Yes, that. yes. Big kudos for that. Thank you. All right, Brad, you got a comment from Randy? Uh, yeah, just a just an anecdotal comment. Uh, you may or may not know. I, you know, been I take my father to his medical appointments, and he lives just south of Talbot. And twice in the last month and a half, I've made it to from that location to the freeway without hitting a light ah. <laughs> all the way through because of the, those computerized lights. So just, and there's a lot more lights than when I was a kid because of all that Liberty Station stuff. So just to let you know that, I mean, I was, I was pretty surprised the first time, but the second time I'm like, hey, this is a real thing. What I mean, time was that around? I'm curious. Hour, <laughs> what time? Time, but it's pretty amazing. What so, time was that? Uh, one of them was, uh, it was like midday, like 11, I think. I'm just one curious on the time. Was, uh, the other one I forgot, but the other one was somewhere around 11, but all the way through, I must, I mean, I didn't even know how many lights that is, what, 12, maybe? Anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there. Okay. Well, thank you, Brad. All right, anything else from Andy? Seeing none, all right. Uh, i just open it up. I don't know if there's any other committees or any other board members that want to comment on anything. Go ahead, Paul. We're going to teach you how to unmute yourself. You're going to- I muted you. myself. I'm sorry. Um, I wanted to report that I uh, did attend the Airport Noise Advisory Committee, and, and I apologize for not having a more a formal report uh, today. I came in very late last night, and I've been busy all day. <clears throat> and uh, just I'm not prepared to make a, a, a real statement uh, on the, the meeting. Nothing of any real consequence came up uh, with one exception, and that's the flights coming in during the curfew. Uh, it was reported that uh, numerous flights were coming in between 10 and 6.30 a.m., but on an average day, no more than one has been coming in after the 11.30 closure of the airport and uh, until the uh, 6 30 reopening in the morning so the number of of actual curfew violations remains very small okay. and i think that i think that's pretty good too paul because just you know with the weather that they're coming in westbound that's when i know i live in the flight path so yeah so do uh, i yeah. yeah, so hearing um you know um it's nice to not have those occurrences so late in the evening yeah. Well, and, and the, the arrivals, there's no curfew, yeah. only on departures. Yeah. Right. The only airport I know that has an arrival curfew is John Wayne in Orange County. And their, their curfew predates ours. And both of ours predates what's known as ANCA, the Airport Noise Control Act, uh, which essentially eliminated the ability for airports to, to have curfews mm -hmm. of any kind. And um, for Yvonne, we want to keep our curfew. <laughs> yeah, we like that. All right. Uh, any other committees or board members that want to make any comments? 
Yeah, I'm going to make a random comment. Good. For everybody, Good. just be careful about potholes. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the pothole pandemic, I was actually a victim of that. But um, Angela sent me a link that CBS is, um, I'm not going to do it, but CBS is doing some kind of county. The San Diego is going to um, allow you guys reimbursement. The city um, is going to allow at least one tire reimbursement. <laughs> That's why, yeah. But just putting it out there. You just have to go on County of San Diego and go on their link and fill out a form. Okay. Thank you, Tina. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anybody else, uh, any public members or anybody else that wants to make a comment? Now it's time. Go ahead, Tracy. Hi guys, um, I feel like I haven't seen any of you in months, um, but I've added a number of things to my plate, so I apologize. Um, I'll try to, I'll try to be brief here. Um, so all of the Ocean Beach Town Council events for the holidays went off swimmingly. Um, we were really excited to be able to do them again for the community this year, and I hope that you made at least one and came out and visited us. The Ocean Beach Town Council is in the process of of elections. So if you are an OB town council email recipient slash member, you will receive a ballot shortly and be able to vote for your town council members. Um, I am a, I am running again. Uh, Ocean Beach Planning Board is also going to be doing its elections in uh, late February and early March. So keep your eye out for that posting as well. Um, I know you guys are also going to be having your elections too. And as far as the uh, San Diego Arts and Culture, uh, I just got an email saying that there's going to be a new grant opportunity for artists and cultural practitioners to creatively increase awareness of local issues. Um, there will be an application that will become available on February 15th, and it's going to focus on supporting artists and cultural practitioners that develop artistic content that will increase local awareness of public health, civic engagement, climate, and social justice. So if you have any artists out there that are um, focused on those topics, then have them uh, follow the San Diego Commission for Arts and Culture and the announcement will be out shortly. And uh, vendor ordinance is done. Woo! <laughs> so that's super exciting. Um, that will go into effect February 1st. At least enforcement will go into effect. We'll see how that plays out. I do know that the city is in process of hiring uh, like 22 or 23 park rangers to be able to uh, do that enforcement. And we've been kept updated the town council has been kept updated on the progress progress of that. So hopefully um, there will be enough enforcement possibilities and we won't have problems with vendors anymore. I think <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> hey Any Tracy, questions? Mandy, Mandy and I put in two new groups in the OB Town Council Christmas parade this year. Yay. <laughs> it was a blast, by the way. I know it's always a, a lot of fun and it's, it's so OB that, I mean, and uh, I rode in the Corvette at the end of the race this year or the end of the parade this year. And the guy that I rode with, he says that he rides in all of the other local parades. And he told me that ocean beach is by far the best. So it was really cool to be in it and see all the locals from Point Loma and Ocean Beach on the sidelines. Yep. That was really cool. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> it made me feel experience. blessed that we're we live in such a cool community, guys, between Point Loma, Ocean Beach, and Midway. Regardless of the issues we have, I'm blessed and special. Because <laughs> we're all there for each other at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, that's what I got out of being in the parade is seeing everybody you know, there in one spot. It was pretty cool. Yeah. And that parade attracts people from all over, you know, the, the area too, not just OB Point Loma. So, I mean, it's a pretty, pretty substantial parade. 
So does anybody have any um, any other questions as far well, maybe as maybe we should uh, have a peninsula community planning board float in next year's parade. Yes. There we go. <laughs> It's a lot the, of fun. Uh, the Ocean Beach. It can be construction. Uh, the, Ocean Beach board, <laughs> the, the Ocean Beach Planning Board did a float for two years, and it's such a it's huge. Like it's such an undertaking um, mm -hmm. that it's hard to get people to volunteer to do it. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's fun. It's super fun. Anybody else have any questions about um, town council planning board or commission stuff? I see Nicole's hand. Nicole, do you have a comment or do you have a question? I have a quick comment and and just as we wrap the, things up and Margaret as a as a liaison between all the community groups and Tracy thank you for all your work there just a quick question for OB and Peninsula and these committees that we have is that we actually don't let outside community members join those committees and it's it's a little bit unfortunate and so something that hopefully we can take into consideration over the years because we want to work all together but yet we're not really allowed to. So, so in, in response to that, the Ocean Beach Town Council actually started doing committees last year, kind of in the middle of the year. And one of the things that we did is we have a chair from the actual town council, but we have asked people from the community to volunteer for the, the committees. So for example, um, I am the advocacy chair <laughs> And I have uh, five or six people that are not on the town council that sit on the advocacy committee. And I've I found that it's really interesting and good because you get more of a perspective and not like this uh, echo chamber of ideas. Right. I'm, I'm more specifically talking about the planning groups because like no way people cannot sit on our traffic committee and we can't sit on OB and vice versa. So just uh, something with our bylaws. Yeah, so. I agree it, with it that. Is, it is something with our bylaws, and I think I mean, the bylaws are written, so we, we do have community members, but the community members have to be part of the of our of our, our boundary, which you know certainly is an argument that right we want we want local people in Point Loma helping out on local issues in, in Point Loma as opposed to people necessarily outside. But go ahead, Mark, uh, Mandy. Oh, I just wanted to also let everyone know. Um, that I am throwing my name in uh, for the town council. So I'm gonna be running for one of those positions as well. I work with Tracy uh, on the advocacy <laughs> subcommittee. I'm one of those subcommittee members. And I have to say, I've really enjoyed working with the town council and um, just getting to know everything that they do um, for our community just, you know, the parade. Um, I got to participate in the toy drive this last Christmas and it was really uplifting to see the the work that they do and all the community stakeholders that come in and fill in the gaps and just, you know, make our community a better place. So I am throwing my name in there as well. So don't be switching are, on us now. So, I, oh I'm no, I'm so I'm running for both. I'm just adding more. I'm really um, grateful that Mandy's going to run. I think that we, uh, we need her perspective on the town council for sure. So, um, I'm looking forward to it. I think you're a shoe in, but I'm I'm not gonna promise anything. Is the town <laughs> council is the town council not zip code related or ter territorial no. related? Nine, nine two one oh seven. Yeah. You, you have, have to, to be nine two one oh seven. Nine two one oh seven. Live or own a business, right? Correct. Yeah, one of those two things. Oh. Yeah. Yep. And I would encourage you all to run because you know, right now. Um, no offense to millennials, but um, we have a, a skewed town council that is very millennial heavy. And I would love to get some um, people my age or older <laughs> to kind of balance it out a little. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I love my millennials. I really do. I love them. They've got great ideas and they're really upbeat and positive and, um, you know, they, they're just, they're good, good souls and good people, but I'd like to have a little bit more balance going on there. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go, guys. Um, I think that's going to bring us to a conclusion. So I want to thank everybody. It was really good to see everybody. I missed you all. Welcome to 2023 and we will see you all in February. All right. All right. Have a great night. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye.